as email marketers, we're always looking to increase our reach and engagement of our emails. One of the ways in which you can do that is through the campaign archive page. So in today's video, we're exploring all about MailChimp's campaign archive page. We're going to be taking a look at where the campaign archive is, what is the URL, how do I find the URL? Then we're going to take a look at how we can hide our campaigns, certain campaigns from our campaign archive if we want to, and hide certain content within campaigns from the campaign archive if you'd like to. And finally, I'll wrap up and I'll show you how to add a campaign archive to your website, in this case, WordPress. So let's get started. Well, so what is the email campaign archive page? Well, it's a free shareable landing page that displays links to recent emails sent to your audience. This does not include classic automations or customer journey emails. When you send an email through MailChimp, MailChimp automatically creates a browser based copy of those campaigns on your archive page. Our first stop on our exploration of MailChimp's archive page is to look at ways in which we can tweak the design of our campaign archive page. So from anywhere inside your MailChimp dashboard, mouse over to the menu items on the left, and we're gonna click on sign up forms, and then we're gonna click on form builder. And under the form builder, the forms and response emails drop down list here, we wanna go down to other bits, and then it says campaign archive page. We're going to click on that. And here is the URL of our campaign archive page. Our options here is to let subscribers to pick an email format, disable new users from registering via the signup form, which I don't think we'd want to do, and also show campaigns in a specific folder. Now I will get to that in a little bit in this video. And while we're here, we can also do a little bit of tweaking. Now this is not going to be a full blown design thing that we can do here. Change the heading up here, we can change the name of the archive up here, or we can change the from list company. We do have an option here to join our mailing list, which is a nice feature. And then it will list out completed email campaigns. Now, some of the other options that you can do to design your campaign archive page is the background color. And if I were to something like that, it will turn the background color. And then we also have the body color. And then we have default text. You can change the line height, the font family, the colors, and you can change the link style. So that's some of the tweaking that we can do to our campaign archive page and how it looks to the public when they get to it. So the next step in this process is how does anyone view this thing from a campaign? Well, if we were to go over to our campaigns, list of campaigns, and I've listed them by completed. And if I were to mouse over view report here, this little drop down arrow here, I can click on social share. If I click on social share, a new window appears with a URL, which is created when we create our campaign. And this is what it would look like to someone who comes across your email campaign if you were sharing it out on social media, for instance. So over on the left hand side, we have a subscribe option and then we have past issues. That past issues leads to our campaign archive. Optionally, we have a translate option, which is a really nice feature. And then we have something over here called RSS, which I will get to in a little bit as one of the options that you can use to put it on your website. The next thing we're going to take a look at is how to hide campaigns from your campaign archive and also hiding individual pieces of content from the campaign archive, like this thing right here, where it says first name. So I'm back under all campaigns from my audience. And one of the ways in which you can hide campaigns from the campaign archive is by creating folders. And then back under the audience settings, we can say only use this folder for the public archive. So let's go take a look at how that's done. So over here in the bottom left, we're going to click on create a folder. I'm just going to call this sample. And then I'm going to go down the list here and I'm going to select just a few of the published emails. There we go. That's a good sample. One, one more. And I'm going to click over on the top right here. It says move to. I'm going to select sample and they'll be moved over to sample. So if I go under sample now, I see six emails right here. So if I wanted to go back, I can click on all and that takes me out of that folder. OK, now back under our form builder, our campaign archive page with our sample folder created, we can then check off only show campaigns in a specific folder. 
So we can check that off. And since I only have one folder, it's the only one that's available. So then if we come back to our archive, if we refresh our archive page, we should only have six emails. The downside to this is that you'd have to do a move to every time you create a new email and you want it to be publicly available in the archive, you'd have to check off the box that says move to and then move it to that folder. Not a big deal in the scheme of things. It's just an extra administrative thing that you'd have to do but that's how you would hide or only show specific emails in your campaign archive page. Now, as far as hiding content that is in the campaign itself, we're gonna to have to use something called conditional merge tags. So let's go take a look at how that works. When we look at conditional merge tags and hiding certain pieces of our content in our email campaigns, this is not retroactive. So going forward, you'll be able to do this, but you won't be able to do it like edit a campaign and put in this conditional merge tag. So just keep that in mind. But the way to do it, so this high F name, I don't want that visible on the campaign archive. So when anyone opens up that campaign URL through the archive, It'll say hi, first name, or whatever default value I might have in there, maybe friend or something. And I don't want that to show in the campaign URL. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on where it says hi, F name, and I'm going to paste in a conditional merge tag. And that conditional merge tag is if not archive page. And then at the end of F name here, we'll hit the enter key and then we'll paste in end if just take out some of the spaces. So what is this doing? This is saying if this campaign is not on the archive page, then show this. In other words, only show this in a actual campaign that's sent out via email, not on the campaign archive. That makes sense. If I only wanted to show content in the campaign archive page and not the actual campaign, then I would take out the not and just keep in if it is the archive page, show this content and the if statement. So that is how you can hide certain elements from the campaign archive. I'm gonna save and exit that. And I just wanted to show you what this is gonna look like. So I'm gonna send this out and we're gonna take a look at how it looks like in the campaign archive versus the email. So let's go take a look at the email first. So it does include the hi Larry. And if we were to go to the campaign archive page, refresh, here's our welcome we just added. And in there, it will not say, hi, Larry. That's the effect of conditional merge tags for your campaign archive. Last but not least is how do we get these campaigns into our website? One of the ways in which to add a campaign archive to your website is through this folder system. So we've created a folder called sample. We'll see over on the right hand side, this get archive code. And if we were to click on that, a little window pops up here and we can click on sample, the name of our folder. And a little bit of code is seen if we just drag this down a little bit and drag this open a little bit, this window, we'll be able to see a bunch of HTML. So we can copy this and paste it in our website. So let's go over to my WordPress website and see what this looks like. Spun up a new page here. And in order to display HTML in a block, we have to call a custom HTML. So we'll do that and we'll paste in our code. Now we can click on preview here and this is what it looks like. Pretty cool. Now, if we were to preview it in the browser, it comes in, it's a little tiny, but we can adjust that little bit of CSS. If we go back to the HTML view, it says here font size 12. We can bump that up to 16. So we've just made the text a little bit bigger. So that's one way to do that. The downside is it's only going to grab the campaigns that are in that specific folder. So that's, that's nice. It's nice for organization. It's probably something you should be doing anyway in MailChimp. The other way to do this, which I alluded to uh, a little bit ago, is this RSS feature over here. And I can grab this RSS URL and add it to my page on my WordPress website and it will display an RSS feed. So let's try that out. So I'm gonna click on RSS. It'll generate 
this XML versioning of what all of my archive looks like. And I just want to grab this URL here and I'm going to go over to a page I've already created in order to get the RSS to display as it did with that folder like this, I have to call an RSS block. And so to do that, I do the slash RSS and the RSS block appears and I can paste in the URL that we got from our campaign archive bar. So we'll paste that in there. We'll click use URL. We'll list out the last five e campaign emails that I sent. The difference between the RSS and that folder way of doing things, that, uh, that little piece of code that we added to this page, the RSS grabs all of our completed emails. So if you wanna display all of your emails in an archive way on your website, you could use this RSS feature. Now, some of the options that you have with the RSS block is the number of items. So I could bump that up to 13, 15, all the way up to 20. And any new campaigns that I would push out to my subscribers would automatically be added. You can also display the author, which is kind of redundant. You can display the date. So let's turn that on. And there's the date that things were published. And display excerpt is not going to be working properly. It's just going to pick up all the HTML code that's behind the scenes in your campaigns. So that's something that shouldn't be turned on. And if we would take a look at this in the browser, you could add in other text on the top. You could add in a title, all the good stuff that you can do in regular WordPress. So that was a lot of stuff to get through. I really appreciate it that you stuck to the end. So we've taken a look at a bunch of things. If you have any questions about the campaign archive page for MailChimp, post them in the comments below. I really look forward to reading them and helping you as best I can. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and don't forget to check out a couple of these videos right here that may be of interest to you.